the channel. In today's video, I have for you guys a review of the Zoya Easy Neons collection. They are right here. The colors are beautiful, but this collection has been a little controversial. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know why. But if you don't, let me give you a little bit of background so you have an idea of what's going on. So a little while ago, maybe a couple weeks, Zoya put out a promotion that said, you know, it was talking about like easy neons and they gave this, um, the whole marketing was around, they are super easy, no white unders, you brush, this is like the easiest neons you're ever gonna get. Now, I got the impression, and a bunch of people did too, that these were gonna be cream colors. Now, I went back, I actually went back into the promos to see if they had ever mentioned that they were cream colors, they didn't. But, you know, the notion of the ease of them and how they looked in the bottle and some of the swatches that they put out in their Instagram really did give the impression that they were going to be creams. But like I said, it wasn't explicit, explicit, explicitly said that cream colors, but the whole vibe just gave that off. Now, um, that was all we got and then they started shipping out, people started buying them, and when people started receiving them, they were in creams. Now, they are jelly colors. They're jelly colors, they build up to opacity in three coats, but they're not creams. Now, if you take them for what they are, which is jelly colors, they're perfectly good jelly neons. There, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. The only thing wrong with them was the marketing. So, I put this analogy on my Instagram, let me, let me, explain this here so you have an idea um, of what happened if you go to a restaurant and you order a sprite and when you sip you sip coke ugh, it tastes like crap it's horrible now is coke horrible no coke is coke but if you expect a sprite and you you know that, that thing where you where you expect water and you sip orange juice or vice versa your brain is expect, expecting one thing and getting another that's what happened with these neons. The only thing wrong with them was the marketing. Um, you expected cream colors that are like super easy and opaque and perfectly, you know, in perfectly beautiful in two coats. And you receive jellies that have to build up to three coats and even some of them still you get nail line. It makes sense, you know, um, the disconnect. Um, but it's not uncommon at all for mainstream neons to be jelly and for them to dry matte that's another thing as you're building them up when you apply them and they're wet they're glossy but as soon as they dry they're matte and that gives off a look that if people are not expecting it and they don't like it, it it's kind of disappointing um but if you usually apply a glossy top coat it doesn't matter because regardless if they dry matte or not you're still gonna put a glossy top coat so which is the case for me now i did expect them to be creams and when i actually saw people swatching them and i saw that they were jellies I didn't have them because if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I, I got these like kind of late. But I was seeing people and they were jelly and I was telling my friend, I was like, oh my God, they're jellies. And I actually wasn't mad about that um, because I've been into jellies lately. But I do understand that the marketing, there was a certain disconnect there from what people expected to what happened. So with that in mind, um, let me think what else I have to say about these. Oh, another thing. Um, even though I agree that the marketing was off, I don't think it was done on purpose and to mislead. This is just my opinion. Let me tell you what I think happened. Zoya in the past has done these types of neons and I have them right here. Um, these are the Zoya Brights, which is a collection from like a couple years ago. These are supposed to be like bright neon summery things. They have a formula that's not too good. Now, the easy neons, are a step above these. So I think when you compare them to previous Zoya um, neons, they are easier and they come equipped with the white brush inside the bottle. Usually, you know Zoya, you have to buy them separately. These come with the, sorry, I'm out of focus, with a paddle brush, which is great. So they are easy when, or easier or better or no fuzz when you compare them to their previous releases. So I don't think Zoya meant in any way, shape or form, you know, to um, mislead people. Just based on how they are as a company from, from the past, they usually put out 
amazing collections. Their quality is always great. And so I don't really think this was like on purpose. Um, that's just my opinion based on, you know, I think it's, these are just better than their previous. So you don't need white under in the previous ones you did, you know, things like that. So I think when it comes into their Zoya universe, these are definitely easier and better and a great improvement over their previous. So also you guys are going to see on the live swatches, I am doing three coats of each. Some of them are two coats. They're pretty opaque. Some of them are three, they get opacity, and some of them, even after three, I can still see my nail line. Now, that really does depend on how strong your nail line is. And I did see some people on Instagram swatch them with white under, and I don't think they benefit. I'm personally very lazy. If I need to be putting white under to get the look that I want, I won't do it. Because white, you already have to work to get even. So it's like, you're working to get the base even, which is probably gonna take you one, one to two coats of white. And then on top of that, you're putting this on, it's just too much work. And if I want it full opacity, I will skip these. These are jellies, these are not creams. Um, I put on my Instagram and actually saved as a highlight um, a bunch of brands that provide cream neons. So like I said, if you guys are looking for and are happy with that jelly finished look, you're gonna love these because as they stand on their own two feet for a jelly, they're great. They do build up, you know, beautifully when you put a glossy top coat they're great the formulas are easy to work with they dry a little bit quickly which is good and bad it's good in the sense that since you have to do three you don't waste too much time but it's bad at the same time because if you're a slow painter 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 if you're a slow painter then um you can't be you know you need to like work semi quickly you know it's not anything that you put it on and it dries immediately but you can't just sit there you know what i'm saying like you have to just work through it, it has the white brush, which makes it easier. I cannot think of anything else. Also, yes, I just thought of something else. Wear your base coat. I got reports that the green one stains some people. And it's so funny, like I keep putting my products over here because I've been filming on my iPhone, which is the camera's on the side, and now I just got a new camera, hello. And the lens is in the middle, so I keep putting it to the side, forgetting that it's here in the middle. So anyways, let's go through the swatches. Um, that's it, then we'll talk favorites and final thoughts. All right, so the first polish we have is Link, and this is described by Zoya as an electric Kelly green neon, as you guys can see here. And this one in the first coat, as long as it's wet, it's fine, it looks like polish, but when it dries, it reminded me of like highlighter. Look at that. Remember in like elementary school or middle school where we used to, at least I did, paint your nails with highlighter? That first coat looks like that. <laughs> but then, you know, when you do the second coat, it looks fine. Um, once it dries, I was still seeing some pieces that need, needed to be corrected. So I did a third coat. And you guys can see here on the picture on the right, a finished look at the end with a glossy top coat. It looks great. So I have no complaints about the final look after the coats. Next up we have Echo, and this is described by Zoya as a deep lagoon blue neon. You guys can see here on the picture on the right how it looks like with its original finish at two and three coats. Um, because it's like a demi-matte finish, I don't like how, it, how that finish looks. So you guys can see here with a glossy top coat, it's completely different. Um, this one builds up really nicely. I don't see in this picture or don't remember even in person having uh, my nail line showing too much. And you guys can see it here again as a close-up. You can barely, I mean, I don't even think I can see anything at all. I really, really like this blue. I think it's perfect for summer, even spring. It's gorgeous, gorgeous blue. Um, and that's it. The formula's good. You guys can see in the live swatch. Next up, we have Banks. And it says that it's a vivid violet neon. And this is not a neon. I mean, if you look at the color, it dries darker. Um, and then it's patchy. I mean, the other ones evened out by code two and just needed a third for opacity this one at second at the second code it was still not even as you guys can see and on the third one it made it more opaque but i still could see little patches even here in the close-up you guys can see um it does have a more see-through feel than the rest i i cannot say that this one went really opaque for me at three um so that's that Next up, we have Janie. I think I'm saying that right. Janie? Jan yeah. This is described as a hot fuchsia pink neon. And this one's the more, one of the more neon colors, actually, in this collection. Um, this one had a really good formula. You guys can see here, even at two coats, 
It's pretty opaque, but I could still see a little bit of nail line, so I did a third one. Plus the glossy top coat, and it looks like this picture here. I don't even think I can see any nail line at all. This one was really easy to apply, you know, taking into consideration that it's a jelly and you need a third coat. The coats themselves were easy to apply. And once you have the finished look, like if you can see in this picture, that's exactly how it looks in real life. And this pink is actually gorgeous. Next up, we have Zelda. And this is described as a pink coral neon. Um, I don't know if it's a neon, but I think it's bright enough. So I'm borderline undecided on this one. You can see the second and third coat is not much of a difference in the comparison shot that I just showed you. But still, I could see a difference. So I feel like, you know, just to make it even better and more even, I went ahead and did a third coat. You guys can see here in the close up. It looks great after you had a top coat. I don't personally like that matte finish. So the top coat is a definite must for me. <laughs> Next up we have Oakley and this is a fiery bright orange neon. I think this is a neon or it could be considered a neon. I mean, it's pretty, pretty bright. And then the same situation as the previous one it was pretty even at two coats as you guys can see. If I had put a top coat at two coats, maybe it would have been fine, but I did want to build it up so that the nail line wasn't showing. So there it is. And I don't see any nail line in the picture and in person it was exactly the same. You guys can see that these jellies, when you apply them, they stay put. There's no, they're not runny or anything, so they're kind of easy to apply. And this one was opaque. You can see in the picture here. So, so now that we have seen all of them, you guys have them right here. And again, I need to focus in the right place. Um, I think if I have to pick a favorite, I will have to go with the pink. I don't know why I love how this looked on me. And also this blue is great. They're all pretty, to be honest. Like I said, after you do the three coats and the, and the glossy top coat, I don't think there's anybody that can say that these are not gorgeous colors, but I do understand that um, you have to build them up. And if you didn't want to do that, they would be disappointing. So this brings me back to the last thing I want to tell you guys. Always remember to wait for reviews. Nail polish is complicated because when you see in the bottle, it's not always what you're getting. So it's very important that before you guys buy nail polish, look up swatches, look up reviews. And that way you don't have to like go through the hustle of like possibly getting something that is not what you wanted, you know? Now, of course, that does not apply to content creators because your core content is to review things for people and showcase collections. If that's what you do, then that's fine. You get it regardless and then you share with people. But if you're a consumer, you know, I know when I'm buying polish for me, not for review for you guys, because that's discovery, that's separate. But when I'm buying polish for me, there is zero chance that I will ever buy polish without looking up a swatch and either Pinterest or Instagram. And if it's a whole collection, for sure I'm gonna be looking for reviews. Also on my Instagram, I have a highlight that's been dedicated to answering you guys' questions about this collection because I know this video is a little bit late. So I wanted you guys to get some information from me. Um, and that's it. I'm testing a new setup. Look at this camera, how cool you see. It focuses in the back, now it focuses in the front, now it focuses in the back. Uh, uh, uh. So I'm still playing with the settings. I don't know too much of what's going on. The lighting is kind of like crooked, but hopefully, little by little, I will learn how to use it and the video should get better. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.